<clears throat> well guys, three years, 300 videos. I didn't even realize it until uh, last night, so uh, we're shy of a couple weeks of being here for three years, but you know, what are the chances of 300 videos hitting around the same time of my, you know, 300, you know, three year anniversary here. So what I did is I was playing around last night on YouTube and, and the number came up on YouTube, you know, where I can see my page and it said 299 videos. And I don't know how it shows off to other people, but I've got stuff blocked and I've deleted stuff, but it's kept account of every video that I put on here. So, welcome to Black Tie Fair. <clears throat> got the old cap because I've got a light directly above me and I'm tired of the shine. And uh, what I did is I got on there last night after I realized this. And, and for some of you guys that uh, follow me on um, Facebook and uh, Twitter and stuff like that, I put out there that this was happening. And I asked for some questions. We'll make it an old-fashioned Q&A. And after three years and stuff, the first person I remember doing a cute question and answer video was, you know, for some kind of anniversary or special was Ghost Critics. So uh, that's that's where it all came from, uh, you know, for you newer guys and stuff. Um, what can I say about being on here for three years and stuff? To me, it is a big deal because, you know, we're going to keep it real here, man. This is a celebration. But let's 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 keep things real, man. Get my heart broke. Had some family members pass away, had a friend pass away, somebody who I was like uh, considered a really best friend ended up, uh, I mean, I'm just going to say it, he uh, more or less is <laughs> awaiting trial for uh, murdering his parents in 2009, you know, so stuff like that. Ended up in a town that I didn't know, but what was the consistent thing? You know, all kinds of good things happened too, but what was the consistent thing going on? You know, the comic book community on here, man, and the people who have been around for a while, the people who are new, the people who have come and gone, um, you know, some great friends, uh, you know, How Depot 2, uh, who texted me about The Walking Dead, and I need to text them back, I found it today, if you're watching Howard, and then there was, like, Steve Ogden, and you got your greats like Captain Strange Life, you got Constant Bromstar, I uh, mentioned Ghost Critic, and I can go on and on with the names, but I'm not going to leave anybody out. So, yeah, man, it's been a hell of a ride, and it's great to be here. So, and to me, it is a big deal. So, um, what we're going to do is that I am going to look at the questions here. I've got some stuff pulled up. i got the YouTube comic book community uh, page up on Facebook. I think it is a closed group, so make sure you request to join, okay? And uh, probably just switch back to my Twitter account. Let's see what questions we have. I looked at a few before I made the videos. I already had some stuff prepared. So, uh, thanks for the questions, guys. Thanks for helping me uh, keep the passion going on this to make 300 videos. Uh, and for the third year, because I'll tell you what, man, when I started this, it felt like it was a whole different lifetime. And it's, I think it's really cool to be here. And plus, like I said, the people that have come and gone and stuff like that, that's that's been really wild for me. So, so many people have shuffled through here. So many people have gone and some people, so many people have stayed. And it's really good to see the, the new bunch that's come in there because you can watch their videos and it's like a cycle. It's like watching this thing from the beginning all over again where they talk about, the, you can just see the joy beaming on them when they just do, you know, um, I think it was a drunk podcast Um and what's bad is I know his real name, and I cannot remember his channel name, Matt on Comics. And I saw these guys talking about it's just been great, and they talked about how long they've been doing the videos, and, I, and, and it's kind of mixed in with the Facebook stuff. And it's kind of, kind of cool to see it through their eyes again and kind of relive all the stuff that I've heard before. So it's just really great to see that something like comics, meeting like-minded people, and having this is just awesome. So that's four minutes of talking. Let's get on to the questions. All right, I'm gonna go down here. I saw one in particular I wanted to answer first. Um, my Buddha one got on here and he asked, "What is your favorite superhero movie and why?" Okay, now this one is kind of obvious and stuff because yeah, I'm gonna talk about this stuff. The best comic book adaptation, in my opinion, I thought uh, at the time that really blew me away. And again, these are just my opinions and stuff. Was Sin City. Uh, the the dialogue was like spot on. Uh, they recreated panels. It had to have been really strange for Frank Miller to be there during the casting, and all of a sudden see these actors come in that looked like his drawings going back to like probably 15 years when he started this. You know, a lot of these actors probably were, you know, like in elementary school and middle school and stuff when he was doing Sin City. So yeah, Sin City's the best comic book adaptation I think. But the, my favorite one. 
and I'm going to talk about this for a second here, is, you know, Superman the movie. Um, when was this, 78? Yeah, 78. Um, I saw this, not on the big screen, but on television. And I'm sitting in the floor, and it's one of those old model uh, TVs that are, you know, on the floor and stuff like that. And I had a babysitter, and the babysitter snuck her boyfriend over, and the lights were all dark. I'm sitting Indian style right in front of the TV, and I remember Krypton being there, and, you know, seeing jor and everything. And, I, and, and it, it helped hook me, and I had started correcting the guy who was trying to impress his, you know, the babysitter about his Superman knowledge. And when I, I busted him on something... Uh, he called them the planet wrong or something, and I was like, it's Krypton, and I turned around and got there, and I remember the guy going, man, I grew up on Superman, and this kid just, you know, just corrected, you know, just, you know, got me there, and all this stuff, and I went, shh, like that, and I don't know what they did behind me, because I never looked up again, never heard him say another word, nor her, so yeah, but as I got older and watched this, you know, you gotta remember when this movie came out, the big thing we probably had was, you know, Batman of the 60s, the television show, the 66 movie, the camp that, like, flooded. Just, it was a phenomenon, and but, you know, that bubble burst real quick, and Batman sales were really bad, and, you know, it, it kind of backfired and stuff. So this was actually, uh, actually a big risk. Then there's the thing of uh, special effects and acting and the costume. You know, oh my God, we can't have this be campy. It was a big risk, and that's what people don't realize. And Richard Donner came in, <clears throat> and the tagline for the movie was, You will believe a man can fly. Now, my mind goes directly to, Oh, it must be the special effects. It's going to make it look like somebody can really fly. I look at it a little different now. What he did is, I don't know, if, I can't remember if it's the first 40 minutes of this movie, first 20 minutes of this movie, but we start out with Jor-El, and we start out with the Kryptonian criminals on trial. And they're sent to the Phantom Zone, and then it's Jor-El and Laura talking, and they put Kal-el in the in the uh, ship, and the planet explodes, and he travels, and we get the great Superman music, and he lands in Kansas, and we all of a sudden, man, it's a period piece. It looks like it's in the 40s or 50s or something. I mean, it's perfect. And you know, John and Martha can't find this baby, and the baby, you know, he's changing a flat tire, and the baby's got nothing but a blanket on that was in the ship with him, and the jack falls out from underneath the truck and this little boy who grew up in this little spaceship is holding the the, the uh, car up keeping John Kent from being squashed and stuff and we watched Clark grow up man you know out on the farm picked on at school having to uh, be the water boy instead of being the football player and having to keep it in and he's racing trains and the little girl sees him and stuff but there's this thing about Clark man here we are in the midst of you know Americana and stuff <clears throat> And Clark, his hair is just a little too black. His clothes are just a little bit too bright. He looks just so much healthier. Real subtle things than the people around him and stuff. And then he has the great talk with John Kent. John Kent dies. He becomes a vagabond. He finds his way. He's trying to find his purpose in the world. He's very confused. He's different from people. He's alienated. Not only is he an alien... And by the time that he puts on that suit after his travels and, and seeing everything he's going through and seeing how he's really messed up about things, and we hear that music come up, and he's standing there in his costume, and all of a sudden he just floats up to the screen and flies off. That's why you believe a man can fly, because Richard Donner made the perfect uh, adaption of Superman, you know, becoming Superman. Now, after that, and he gets Metropolis and all that stuff, you can hack that stuff all you want, man. But that's why I think this is the best one. Alright, thanks for sitting through that.